How does the Milky Way galaxy move? Well, we actually just got this really cool image in on apod.nasa.gov, so shout out to them of a really great graphic put together. Um, it was a, a, a computerized model of different data points collected by the Gaia mission. So the Gaia satellite, which is located out at Lagrange point two, which is past the orbit of Earth um, and on its way to the orbit of Mars. So it's between the two bodies. Um, and it is an area where there is a gravitational equivalence. So at equilibrium, meaning that it's able to remain relatively stationary to be able to collect different data points on our galaxy. And what you see here in this image is something really, really cool. Um, You've got blue lines and you've got red lines, and this represents blue shift and red shift, which means blue shift is something approaching you, red shift is moving away. Uh, this has to do with not just light, but also with sound. It's a compression or a uh, decompression of wavelength. Um, so it's getting really, really squashed and it's shifting over to the blue side of the electromagnetic spectrum, or it's getting really stretched out and elongated moving over to the red side of the electromagnetic spectrum. And so, um, what's cool about this image is, um, these are a, a collection of about 26 million stars um, and they, they, they were measured uh, like where they're located, how fast they're moving to or away from us, known as the radial velocity. Um, they also uh, collected information um, of their temperatures, their colors, uh, and a bunch of other really fun things like that. And so you were able to sort of get this overall understanding of the motions, which show stars moving it away from us, which were located out in this sort of outer region of the Milky Way, if we click on this. So we're located out here in this, this point right here, if we zoom in. So this is that center part of the Milky Way galaxy. You, if you could kind of see like a yellowish color to it, this is that center bulge where there is the supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A. Um, from, from that center part, you start to have sort of a split off of different, um, like collections of stars and matter, which shapes into these arms, which turns into sort of these arm shapes. And we're located approximately here in the Scutum Centaurus arm. And um, that is where the Gaia satellite is also, because it's with us within our own solar system. Um, but just to remind you guys, uh, this is not a real picture of the Milky Way galaxy. We don't have one of those. This is a computerized artist rendition of it. And that is because uh, we haven't sent anything beyond uh, our own galaxy to be able to image it. So this is sort of an overall estimation of the shape and how it looks and everything based on just actual collections of data points of different stars within our galaxy. Because uh, we've been able to, to, to see and map quite a lot of it thanks to missions like the Gaia mission. And so uh, what's also really cool, by the way, about APOD is it'll open up all these different, it'll link all these different really great websites. This one is University of Wisconsin um, with some information and work done on the motions of the galaxy. So basically to sort of answer this big question here, how does the Milky Way move? It moves like a lot of other objects in space, which is um, things circling around a center of mass, whatever has the, 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 the highest, strongest amount of gravitational influence, uh, which is usually caused by the largest amount of mass. Um, and so, so knowing that there is the center part of the galaxy, which is a supermassive black hole, there is a lot of um, influence based on what Einstein predicted in his theory of general relativity, saying that when you have an object with mass, it's going to uh, not only warp the very fabric of space and time, but what that really just means is it um, has a very strong gravitational influence on things around it, pulling the stuff in towards it. So basically to answer that question, it's spinning, uh, which which is is kind of already understood about about galaxies and like I mentioned a lot of other things in the universe. We spin on our axis and we spin around the sun, uh, and objects spin around the sun, and the whole solar system is spinning like a corkscrew. And so a lot of things are basically just spinning in the universe. Um, but this is this is really cool. There's also um, a bunch of other images here, which are really awesome. Uh, we have extinction, radial velocities, 3D motion, and chemical. I'm guessing that's the order. I wish it actually said what the order was. Um, it doesn't say that, but 
we know this one is the radial velocities because that's what we just read. Uh, so we know that that one is the velocities of stars moving away or, or towards us. This one looks like it would make sense for this to be chemical because it's very rainbowy. So it's showing uh, different things um, as far as its spectrum goes. That's, well, it's really, really close up. Oh my gosh, that's a little slightly nauseating. Okay, um, this one, so maybe this one is the extinction, which doesn't give the description, but I'm guessing an extinction is when things are done and extinct. Stars that died? <laughs> I don't know. Then you have uh, 3D motion. So maybe this one is 3D motion up here. Three-dimensional motion. So how would that be different than the radial velocity? Radial velocity is based off of if it's moving to or, or, or away from us. So 3D motion would just be, I guess, it's general current motions. Maybe? I don't know. I'm not sure. It does not describe it, though. So I'm sorry, guys. Click on understanding details. It opens up this cute picture of a cat, which is really funny. Um, click on Milky Way. And this comes up, which is really cool. The universe within 5,000, oh, sorry, 50,000 light years of the Milky Way. All right. And well, there, there is your latest on the Milky Way galaxy and some information that just came through from the Gaia satellites as far as the different motions of stars go. Thank you all so much for listening. I hope you guys are enjoying some of these videos. I am sharing various different videos such as not just space content, but also things about overall wellness and health and fitness. Um, because that stuff is important. Uh, it's important regardless of what industry your career might be in or whatever it is. Uh, it's, I think it's just really valuable to be uh, uh, just a well-rounded human and also being um, as fit and as healthy as you can possibly be for not just yourself, but also for the longevity of humanity, uh, not just on earth, but also as we explore more of the cosmos. Um, so that is why I'm going to be sharing a little bit more of that stuff. Uh, but also on top of that, um, I just want to give one more shout out for this t-shirt. Um, this is for my dark skies campaign. So I'm raising money right now to donate to the dark skies association. Um, uh, which is a really important association to not just raise awareness around light pollution and sort of reconnecting ourselves to space and the stars above, um, but also to the to actually taking action in limiting light pollution in certain areas um, wherever they're able to basically get to and target and not just for humans, but also for the life that we share this planet with. Uh, so other types of species and animals and plant life that it's also affecting. Um, and so I believe a lot in their mission. And so I'm raising a, some money for that by selling these t-shirts and these t-shirts say reawaken your awareness of the cosmos. And then it shows a person up on a hill with their telescope looking at the cosmos. All right. Well, thank you all so much. I hope you guys like this video. If you do feel free to hit the subscribe button or like this video and leave a comment. Um, as always, uh, feel free to reach out to, to me on social media or here on YouTube to say hello, to ask a question. Um, or if you want to help support, um, I do have a Patreon page, which is just Ashto Athens, patreon.com slash Ashto Athens. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. And as always, add Astra.